Hey there my artists, I hope you guys are having a great week. So in this video lesson, we're gonna learn how to make our own Vincent Van Gogh inspired bedroom. So for this, I made my own little dream bedroom. I use cardboard, I use paint, I use some oil pastels, and I also use some things that I had around the home to make it. So if you guys don't have the same art supplies that I do, that's okay, just use what you have. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. While in France, Van Gogh made this painting of his bedroom in the yellow house. He prepared the room himself with simple furniture and his own work on the wall. The bright colors were meant to express absolute sleep. Research shows that the strongly contrasting colors we see in the work today are the result of discoloration over the years. The walls and doors, for instance, were originally purple rather than blue. The apparently odd angle of the rear wall, meanwhile, is not a mistake on Van Gogh's part. The corner really was slanted. The rules of perspective seem not to have been accurately applied throughout the painting, but this was a deliberate choice. Vincent told Theo in a letter that he had deliberately flattened the interior and left out the shadow so that his picture would resemble a Japanese print. Hey there you guys, we're going to go ahead and get started on our Van Gogh's bedroom. So the first thing that you're going to need is a cardboard box. So I saved the, this box that I got from a recent order. Um, and you're going to need a strong pair of scissors. So I have my scissors right here. We're going to go ahead and start to cut apart our box. Um, you pretty much just want to cut it so it'll lay open flat. And we're going to actually be cutting the cardboard into smaller pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start cutting along this one edge. Um, and you want to be really careful when you're cutting with the cardboard, always cutting away from you, never towards you. So we're trying to use our safe scissor skills for this project. So um, I have my box open and it looks like I have a lot of good pieces to work with. So I'm going to keep cutting. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these three spaces right here where the box naturally folds. So I'm going to just keep cutting. So I have some big pieces, I have some little pieces, and I'm going to decide which ones I kind of want to work with. So the main point of this room is for us to have two walls and a floor. So we're going to pick out the pieces that are going to be best to make that wall. So I could use this piece right here, but I think I want it to be more of a square and less of a rectangle. So I may need to make some more cuts. That way I have more of a square shape instead of these tall rectangle pieces. Alrighty, so for this piece, I'm going to start measuring my cardboard. Um, I'm going to use this piece for my flooring of my bedroom. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe, let's try seven inches. Um, if you want to make your room a little bit smaller, you totally can. So I'm going to make a little tick mark um, with my marker at the seven inch mark. So I'm going to go ahead and line it up with the edge of this cardboard here. I'm gonna make a little tick mark right here because I eventually wanna draw a line on that edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and line that up. I'm going to draw a line because I'm gonna be cutting off that extra cardboard. So now I'm going to line this up at seven inches right here. Go all the way to the zero. And I'm going to draw a line. Okay, and then I'm going to finish off this square and I'm going to line it up. Try to keep it as level as possible. If you want to measure seven inches on each side and make like a little tick mark, you can. Um, and I'm going to have this fold running through the floor of my cardboard, which I'm okay with, but if you want to have a smooth, flat floor, then I would pick a larger piece of cardboard. But since this is the box I have, this is going to be what I have to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and 
um, cut this out later, but I'm going to measure my other cardboard pieces. All right, so I cut out this one piece of cardboard that is going to be my tool for measuring all the others. Since I have it measured seven inches on all sides, it is going to be our tracer. So I have my other two pieces of cardboard, which are gonna be the walls. So I'm going to line this piece of cardboard up with the corner. Gotta find a good spot for that. And I'll line it up with the corner over here, making sure all of those sides are lined up and square. And then I'm going to use my marker and I'm going to go ahead and trace my open side. So I have side one, and I think I have a little bit of tape overlapping over here, so I'm gonna have to be careful about that. And then I have side number two. Okay. So I can cut out that cardboard piece and now I'm going to uh, trace and cut out my other piece. All right, so now that I have the cardboard pieces cut out, I'm actually gonna go ahead and paint them because it's gonna be easier to paint these when they're cut out than when they're all assembled together. So I'm gonna start by painting the two walls and then the floor. Alrighty, so I have the floor painted and I went ahead and I used some oil pastels to make it look like it was a hardwood floor. So now I'm going to use um, my pink oil pastel to give some stripes to my walls here. Alrighty, so now that all of my surfaces are painted and drawn in, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to attach them together. So I think the easiest way to do this is going to um, clear my workspace of all the other supplies so I don't accidentally dip anything in some paint. Or okay, so while my hot glue gun is warming up, I think I'm going to start joining my cardboard pieces together or at least planning how they're going to be situated. So I wanna make sure that the stripes on my walls are going the same direction. Um, it would look kind of silly if one was going horizontally and the other was going vertically. So I think I'm gonna try to tape these pieces to my floorboards um, and we will see how that goes. I'm not sure if there's gonna be a little bit of a gap because of the tape. I may have to just go in and hot glue. Okay, so I'm gonna slip this piece of tape underneath and I'm just going to kind of sit this cardboard piece right next to it, making sure my corners, my edges are really lined up. And then on the back, I'm just going to kind of fold up that little piece of packing tape. It's hard to see because it is kind of behind the wall. So I think that's as good as I'm gonna get it. And when I do the hot glue, it will sit you know, as flush as it can with that piece of flooring. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. That way everything's kinda in its spot. And when I have the hot glue, I'm gonna wanna work quickly because it will set and cool kinda fast. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to put that piece of cardboard down and I'm going to go behind it and I'm gonna just press that piece of tape up on the other side of the wall, just like that. So I have my two cardboard pieces. My hot glue gun does feel like it's kind of warming up, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a few dots of hot glue along my edge. So I'm gonna make sure that I don't drip it on the table underneath, but that I do it on the edge of my cardboard pieces. I'm gonna try to be very careful. I'm gonna do one little stripe of glue there, one little stripe of glue in the middle, and then one little stripe of glue on this other side. And I'm going to let that kind of set up. So I'm gonna hold it in place 
while that hot glue starts to dry. Um, ideally, I would like to use some more hot glue, but I don't wanna do a big, thick line of glue along here and finish it just in time for it to be cooled off. So I'm gonna start with a little bit and then I'm gonna go back in and I'm going to add more. So this piece looks like it can stand up pretty well on its own. So I'm going to be joining this next piece of the wall together. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do three little stripes of glue all along this edge, and then I'm going to be gluing from the other side on this side of the wall here. So I am going to kind of turn it back so I don't have glue dripping down into the wall, into the room here. Um, we can kind of see this is what I have to work with. It's looking pretty good. So I can go ahead and add more hot glue to my seams right here. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that from the back instead of doing it from the inside here. So it'll be a little bit cleaner and my craftsmanship level will be much higher. Now that the foundation of our room is finished, it's time for us to decorate. I used some objects that I found around the house and different art supplies to finish the decoration of my room. I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue a window that I made using cardboard, a popsicle stick, and a reusable bag. Instead of making a bed, I decided to use my glasses case because I felt that it was the perfect shape. For the bed sheet, I just used a tissue. The next piece of decor I made myself. I used a bit of cardboard and some fun rainbow yarn to make a cute little rug. Next, I wanted to add a little mini painting and easel. I actually painted this in college for my graduation cap, but it was an extra, so I decided to keep it. Next, I decided to add something to the wall. Using a matchstick and some tiny macrame cord, I made a tiny macrame wall hanging. And finally for the pillow, I decided to use a tiny jewelry bag that I had. I folded it in on itself to make it look nice and fluffy. And there you have it, a Van Gogh inspired bedroom. I hope you guys have fun creating your own.